If you're anything like me, then you might be severely addicted to your phone. In fact, it might be so bad that every morning, this is you. That's right, my addiction is so bad that every morning I scroll on my phone for hours. But today, we're gonna try to reverse that. That's right, you guys. This week, we're gonna be switching our screen time for reading time. So let's get started. Today is Sunday, and it is the first day of our switching screen time for reading time challenge. I have spent the entire morning with Parker just cleaning our apartment, doing our laundry. That's normally how our Sundays go. So I actually do have pretty much the rest of the evening to complete this challenge for today. I haven't even looked at how much reading time we have, so we're gonna go ahead and check that now just to see. So for today we only have to read for two hours and 25 minutes which is not bad at all definitely doable like I said I have the rest of the evening and I have already picked out the first book that I want to read and that is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager I saw a comment literally today on my YouTube channel from my last video where Ashley said that this is her favorite Riley Sager book so now I'm hyper fixated on it and I really want to read it ever since reading that comment today so this was an easy choice this is what we're going with I am excited but Riley Sager for me is a hit or miss author. It's difficult because for me they're kind of like mid thrillers. Most of them are around the three star range. And another thing that he does is sometimes his plot twist can be realistic or he likes to include supernatural plot twist. I really don't like the supernatural plot twist. I don't know why but it's just not my thing. So honestly depending on what this book has will probably make or break whether or not it's one of my favorite Riley Sager books. But I'm excited, so we're gonna start now. That's crazy, right when I finished that last page. The timer went off. Would you look at that? I have made it to page 179 in the book and this book is about a girl named Emma. When Emma is younger she is sent to the summer camp and while there she's dorming with three other girls named, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head, Vivian, Natalie, and Allison. Good job, Cyan. And while she's dorming with them, one night the three girls leave their cabin and are never seen again. They just completely disappear. Now it is 15 years later, the owner of the camp is deciding to reopen it back up and she asks Emma to come and be like an art instructor at the summer camp. So she decides to go back. It's really fun because you're getting all of those summer camp vibes. I've never been to summer camp. I don't think I would ever send my own children there, but I imagine this is what summer camp is. Is like it feels like the movies you know but anyways while she's there she's basically gonna try and figure out what happened to the three missing girls all those years ago because for some reason in books like these they always figure it out even though the cops couldn't so that's what's going on right now for me and this is just a complete personal issue but I am someone that I love true crime I'm in college for criminal justice and forensic science so true crime is a huge part of my life. I guess you could say I'm engaged in that community and this feels a lot like the Girl Scout murders if you have ever heard of that case. So for me, it's kind of hitting in a weird and uncomfortable way just because it feels too real. And I know that some thrillers can be super realistic, but when this reminds me of something that actually happened in real life that was terribly tragic, it makes me feel a little uncomfortable. But like I said, that is just a personal problem. But besides that, it's not bad. I just feel like I'm gonna have to keep reading and see how the ending goes to see how I feel. So 
I'm honestly probably gonna end up finishing this tonight because I have this issue where if I'm reading a thriller I can't just put it down and walk away like I need to finish it and I need to figure out how it's going to end or it will drive me insane so even though I am done reading my screen time for today I think I'm gonna keep reading and probably finish it but of course I'll update you guys and let you know so it is the next day and I did end up actually finishing last night the last time I lied by Riley Sager so I wanted to give you an update on it I will say one thing that we talked about that I don't particularly like in Riley Sager books is when they have supernatural aspects to it this book did have supernatural aspects but they were not the main cause of the plot twist the plot twist was something that was super realistic so I do like that fact about the book however sometimes it fell a little bit flat for me it felt a little bit slow the plot twist did get me but still it just wasn't one of my favorite Riley Sager books it was still decent so because of that I give it 3.5 stars but now we're moving on to today's reading vlog and the second book of the video so today we have to read for a long period of time we have to read for seven hours and 22 minutes so I woke up early that way we can get a head start on the day but that's a lot of reading time so the first book I'm starting off with is going to be on my Kindle I did buy it so it's not on Kindle Unlimited but it's a new Riley Sager book called The Only One Left and I really just want to read it because the cover is beautiful I'm not gonna lie that's what drew me into this book but it's also his newest release I want to see what it's about Maybe it'll be better than the last time I lied. Who knows? We'll have to see. I know absolutely nothing about it, but I'm super excited. So we're going to go ahead and hop right into it. Okay, you guys, so I'm a little bit over 51% of the way through the book now, and we have about five hours left on our timer, if it wants to focus. Hello? There we go. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a check-in. So far, this book is about a girl named Kit. Kit is a caregiver, and she has a situation happen at her job, so she ends up going on leave for six months, or like, suspension for six months and when she gets back her job is now on the line so she has no choice but to take a certain job that none of the other caregivers really want and this is the job of taking care of a woman named Lenora Hope. Lenora lives in a huge Victorian mansion on like the side of this cliff and the home is also the home where she murdered her entire family decades ago. So She's a known murderer, no one wants to take care of her, but now it is up to Kit. And Kit has to be a live-in caregiver because she has no function of her body and she cannot speak. The only thing she can do is move her left hand. So now Kit is there taking care of Lenora and all of these weird things start happening in the house. She also starts talking to Lenora through the use of a typewriter and Lenora is going to be giving her her entire story of how she killed her family and why she did it. So so it's very interesting so far. I'm not gonna lie, I think one of the main reasons why I love it is because of the vibes of like the 1920s. I think that's when it takes place. I also think it's interesting because she's not telling her full story through the use of the typewriter. Right in the beginning, you're kind of getting bits and pieces of it, so you want to keep reading so that you can finally put the whole story together. There's also other people that work in the mansion, like the maid, the groundskeeper, stuff like that, and some of them are so old that they were working at the house when Lenora killed her family, so I feel like there's going to be a plot twist there to where maybe one of the previous workers has something to do with it. But yeah, so far so good. I am really enjoying it and I'm just gonna sit here and keep reading because I have quite a bit of time. The only thing I have to do later is go to the gym. So we're literally gonna just keep reading until that time comes. <laughs> I have 
finished the only one left with two hours and 35 minutes left on our timer and i will say this book was so good to me this is probably my favorite riley sager book that i've read so far so in the end you were basically just figuring out what happened when lenora killed her family all those years ago there are a few plot twists in the story and i did guess one of them but it still didn't take away from the story the story was so interesting and it really gripped my attention and i just had so much fun reading it i think another part of the reason why i had fun is because you know the setting is the 1920s you're getting flashbacks from that time period and you get to see what happened to this rich influential family and just rich people drama and I love drama so that was really fun for me I love this book I thought it was so good and so I gave it four stars and that's that that is by far the best Riley Sager book so far which makes sense because it is his newest release so maybe his writing is just getting better but Riley great job as if he would ever see this video anyways i have been reading for a very long time now so i'm probably just gonna chill out for a little while go to the gym later and since i only have like two and a half hours left i'll probably continue reading tonight and start a new book so i will see you guys when that time comes it's a lot later in the day i am officially ready for bed but i still have time left on our timer so it's 9 17 and i have two hours, 35 minutes, and I picked out my next read, and I think I'm going to start Magnolia Parks finally. I am super nervous because I know that this is a toxic romance, and I don't know how I'm going to feel about it, but I just need to go ahead and dive in because literally everybody loves this book. Well, yeah, I feel like most people actually really do love this book, so we're just going to see how it goes, and I'm going to try and stay up and read for a little bit later. I shouldn't be as tired as I am because it's literally only 9.17 but I'm tired and if I just stick it through and read I will finish at 11 52 so right before midnight that way it still counts as part of the challenge you know I'm not gonna fail I've already gotten this far and by this far I mean that today is is it Monday yeah today is Monday only the second day but i'm gonna finish before midnight so we're gonna go ahead and get started and read as much as i possibly can and here comes blue huffing and puffing into the room so sorry if you could hear that but let's start reading <laughs> pages left with this chapter so let me finish it real quick okay so it is now 11 57 hello but i got to page 204 i actually finished reading for my screen time for today just in time let's talk about the book this is about magnolia and bj they are a very toxic couple. They both come from rich families, live in London, super elite, fancy, rich kid drama. They grew up together, dated at one point, but their relationship ended because of a certain reason. They still want to be together. In their minds, they can't be together, which it's not the case. They could totally be together if they would just act like adults. But because they can't be together, they both do things to make each other jealous. And it's just super freaking toxic. And it's really sad because the whole time they're doing these things, you can see like inside their minds that they actually 
really, really do love one another, but it's so frustrating. I also really don't like BJ. I don't really care for Magnolia, but I feel like what she's doing is wrong, just not as bad or as hurtful as what BJ is doing. And I also don't understand yet why people root for them to be together. I just feel like they shouldn't. I wouldn't want to be with BJ. I'm hoping it gets better because everyone loves this couple. So does it get better? And yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm gonna go to bed now and I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Good night. Technically not good night for you, but good night for me. Good morning, you guys. It is currently Tuesday. And as you saw last night, I did start reading Magnolia Parks. We already talked about how I feel about it so far, but today I'm going to continue reading for my screen time. I haven't even checked how long I have to read for, so let's do that. Today, I only have to read for five hours and one minute. I say only, like that's not a lot, but I woke up early. We have a good bit of time on our hands, so hopefully I can finish this book today. I mean, I'm definitely gonna be able to finish it today, but we're just gonna read this and honestly hope that it gets better. So I did just finish reading Magnolia Parks and of course I have some thoughts. So I want to start off by saying that I'm about to drag these characters through the mud but it was a good book. I will give it that. I loved the drama. Was it toxic? Absolutely. I felt like the drama was so good. It's nice to just you know witness from afar. Of course, we don't want that in our own lives, but it's fun. So I did have fun with it. I enjoyed reading it. But as you saw, it is such a frustrating book. To me, the way that BJ acts, especially, I did not like whatsoever. Him and Magnolia are both toxic, but for me, I think that what he does to Magnolia is 10 times worse than what she does to him. And it's like, for what? If you two want to be together, just be together. I don't understand their whole dynamic and why they do these things to each other. And to me, it's BJ's fault. I don't understand how so many people love him. So I'm hoping that in their next book, they get better. So really, I just need you guys to tell me that they get better. Besides that, I do like this author's writing. It's very beautiful. I like the way that her characters are almost talking to you as a reader. I did not like the fact that Magnolia always pointed out what people were wearing and I didn't care. I have no idea what she's talking about. When she's going into detail about exactly what someone is wearing, girl, I'm too broke to know what the heck is going on and what that looks like. So I can't imagine any of it in my brain. Moving on, I also understand now why people say like the bee thing is a thing but I feel like people latched onto that one detail and I don't get it. Maybe it's because I'm allergic to bees. Fun fact, I found out I was allergic to bees and wasp and yellow jackets when I was in the second grade. I got stung on the back of my hand. My whole entire body broke out into welts and my lips were so swollen that on the way to the hospital my sister had to hold my nose and my lip like this because it, they were so swollen that they covered my nostrils and I couldn't breathe out of my throat because it closed up or my nose. So all of that is to say that's probably why I didn't care for the bee thing in this book, if you know what I'm talking about. But still, I don't hate bees. Save the bees. Where was I going with this? The book was good. I did enjoy it, but it was frustrating. So I feel like if you're going to read this, you have to be ready and you need to know what you're getting into before you read it or else you're definitely not going to like it. But for me, I did really like it. I gave it 4.5 stars. But now I have some time. I only have an hour and 18 minutes left. So I think I'm going to save it for tonight once again and just kind of think about what I want my next read to be because I have no clue yet. So I'll see you guys then. Hi you guys, so it's later. We have an hour and 18 minutes left on our timer. I have officially picked out our next read, so we are going to be reading. Well, not we, but me. Shatter Me. And because it is a super long series, I'm a little bit nervous to get into it. It is YA dystopian, and I'm pretty sure it's just about a girl that she touches people and they die. So, we're going to read this tonight. Adam. 
Why do I feel like that's wrong? This has got to be one of the most unflattering angles, but I don't care. I just got to page 117 in Shatter Me. So basically in this book, like we said, Juliet, she cannot touch people because if she does, then they die. So because of that, she gets detained, I guess is what you could call it. And in this world, there is something called the reestablishment, which is like the new government basically. And they are trying to get rid of books and languages and knowledge and the whole world is just falling apart. But once the reestablishment learns about what she can do, they have have now taken her prisoner or hostage same thing and they're gonna try to use her as a weapon it's very interesting actually that was a lie i feel like it's a little bit boring so far i do like the writing style it's very easy to read but it's just a little boring right now maybe it's because i'm sleepy so i am gonna put it down and go to bed and we will finish it tomorrow. Happy Wednesday, you guys. It is currently thunderstorming and it is going to be thunderstorming all day long. So it's actually perfect for this challenge because that means I can stay at home and read. Because when it rains, I'm not leaving my house. So today we're going to be reading for, let me check. We're gonna be reading for five hours and nine minutes, which is not bad at all, might I say. But the book that we're going to be reading today is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. I did start last night and I gave you guys some of my thoughts. So I'm on page 117. Honestly, I'm not caring for it, but maybe it will get better. I have heard people say that the third book is where the series gets really good, but I don't wanna have to read three books just to finally get into it. Who knows, maybe by the end I will love it. So yeah, we're gonna just start reading for the day. I just finished Shatter Me. I just feel like this book was a little boring at some parts. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot that goes on in this book, but it just fell flat. And I hate saying that because I know a lot of people love this series, but it just wasn't super entertaining to me. I feel like it followed a similar plot that a lot of dystopian novels will follow. Well, I haven't really read many, any actually, but from the movies that I've watched, it just kind of follows something similar to those plot lines, so it was kind of predictable to me. I don't really care for either of the love interest in this. One of them, I don't understand how he's gonna be a love interest because he seems like a bad guy. And then the other one, he seems all right, but I feel like they are going to have, obviously, a role reversal. So, I know that that's going to end up coming probably in the other books. And I just... I don't know. It ended in a way where I'm not super excited to pick up the rest of the series. I don't know if I'm even going to read it. That's a lie. I am going to read the rest of the series because I've already bought the entire thing. But... I'm just not excited to continue it right now, so who knows when that will happen. But yeah, for me, it was okay. It was decent. I gave it three stars. Maybe it's also just the YA aspect of it. I don't think I am personally a huge YA fan, but now I have two hours and 43 minutes left, if this will focus. And that book, it didn't put me in a slump per se, but it just didn't make me want to read for the rest of the day. So I'm going to wait once again for bedtime and probably pick up a new book. So actually two hours and 30 minutes is a long time to read before bed. We'll do it anyways. Good morning. No. Good evening, you guys. I am once again in bed by 8.02 p.m. But... 
we have a good amount of time i would say i mean it's not really that long but like it kind of is we have two hours and 26 minutes left and i decided to read one for my enemies by all of one for my enemy by olive blake i've seen it on a lot of people's youtube recently and i want to read it because i've heard that it is a romeo and juliet retelling but they're witches so I thought that would be really fun to read for tonight. I have never read anything by Olive e. Blake, but I've heard that like her writing is a little bit more difficult to get into. I'm a little nervous for that, but I'm excited. And I don't want to stay up too late, so I'm literally just going to try to ride through it, not take any breaks, and read for the next two and a half hours so we can get it done. I did buy it on my Kindle. It's not on Kindle Unlimited, so just in case you were wondering. But yeah. Let's get to reading. Let me quickly talk to you guys about the book. One for my enemy. This is about two rival witch families that are both part of the mafia. So one is the Fedorovs and one is the Antonovas. The Fedorovs, it's the dad and three boys and the Antonovas is the mom and seven daughters. Yikes. But two of the the daughters and two of the sons end up falling in love with one another and obviously that's not supposed to happen so there's a lot of drama going on. Their names are so hard to pronounce. And this book is in third point of view and you're getting a lot of different people's point of views though which I don't really like that much. I also just feel like the names are so confusing because they all have their names which it's hard to pronounce but that's not even the confusing part. It's because there's so many characters and not only do you get their names but they all have nicknames and it's just confusing my brain right now i don't know if it's just like too late for me to comprehend it but i will get so confused especially because some of the names sound familiar like one is sasha yeah so there's sasha there's masha and then there's stas there is like a family tree in the beginning of the book but honestly like i'm not gonna go back and forth back and forth till we get this freaking family tree like it's I don't even want to talk about it. Another thing I didn't really like is so one of the brother and sisters that fell in love, their relationship was like in the past but they broke up because obviously they're in rival families and right now the younger sister and the youngest brother are also falling in love and I will say they fell in love pretty quickly but like I think Romeo and Juliet fell in love pretty quickly too but there's a lot going on. It's a lot of, I don't want to say politics, but it kind of is because you've got rivalry within the mafia and stuff like that. Anyways, I don't even know if it's technically a mafia, but like that's what it feels like. So they're not good witches. They literally sell drugs. Not like drugs drugs, but like magic drugs. I mean, I guess a drug is a drug, right? I'm also a little bit nervous because I like both of the couples and I think we all know how Romeo and Julia ends and I don't want that to happen in this book, but I got a feeling that it will. But yeah, I don't know how I feel. Like, I am enjoying it, but I just have no motivation to read it. I don't think the writing style is hard to understand like I thought it was going to be. There's also really pretty artwork in the book, though, so that's good. Do I have anything else to say? No. I'm about to go to bed, so good night, you guys. I'll see you in the morning good morning you guys it's a new day which means it's the start of another reading my screen time for the day and today is actually a long one so i'm not super excited about that we are reading for seven hours and 30 minutes i think i'm not excited because i will be reading one for my enemy by olive e. blake and so far i'm just not liking it I don't know what it is. I think it might be the whole confusing aspect of it and maybe my brain just can't handle that because I like the plot and where it's going, but it's just really bothering me that I don't know who they're talking about half the time. But we're gonna finish this out strong. Let's get started because we have a long day ahead of us. So 
So I just finished one for my enemy. I keep wanting to say enemies for some reason. Of course, because it is, you know, a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, there is tragedy, but at the very end, there's also kind of, I guess, a happy-ish ending. I did like the fact that it was about witches this time. I think the competing mafia witches was a nice touch to the story. Her writing wasn't very difficult to get through and I also didn't really like that it was in third person and you got a bunch of people's point of views in third person. I don't know. I just didn't really like that aspect of it but it was a decent book. I however just kept finding myself wanting to pick up my phone because it felt so long and unnecessary. I don't know why but today it just felt like this book went on and on and on. However, I gave it 3.5 stars, did like it, and yeah, now we're gonna just take a little bit of a break and then I think I know the next book I wanna read and I'm actually really excited, so. You'll see in like two seconds. I'm back. I told you guys it wouldn't take that long. I did take a little bit of a break and now I have a couple of hours before I have to go to the gym. So I thought I would knock off just as much screen time as I could. So we're going to start our next read and I'm actually super excited about this one. I've heard a lot of things about it and the concept sounds really interesting to me. So that is The Grace Year. This book is about a group of girls that when they turn 16, they take what is called a grace year and no one knows what happens during the grace year and apparently it's a mix of the handmaid's tale and lord of the flies don't know anything about lord of the flies also don't know anything about handmaid's tales it doesn't matter because i'm gonna read it and we're gonna find out what happens during the grace year so i'm super excited <laughs> So I've been reading for a little while now. I actually have to leave in like five minutes, but I wanted to update you guys real quick. I got to page 202, which is the middle of a chapter and does it upset me? Yes, but I'm about to be late. But this book is following a girl named Tierney. She lives in this town where whenever the girls turn 16, like I said, they get sent out on their grace year. And when they go out to their grace year, the purpose of it is to rid them of their magic that they believe girls possess. And like I said earlier, no one knows what goes on during the grace year, but we're seeing it from her point of view with all these other girls. And they are just trying to survive in a small environment that they're enclosed in. And, you know, it seems not that bad, but they don't have anything provided for them besides food, but they're gonna have to ration it out and stuff like that. But everything else is pretty much up to them. Tierney is going in, she's kind of the outsider, and there's a mean girl that's in there that is taking lead of the entire camp and being very controlling and also kind of manipulating the other girls. And they also grew up in a society where men took charge, and so now that they're out there on their own, it's up to them. And they're kind of gonna, you know, go crazy not having some someone tell them what to do every second of the day. So they're dealing with that, but they also have other issues such as these people that are called poachers. And the poachers are basically people that the entire time they're in this camp will try to kill them if they leave. So there's that. It's so interesting so far. I'm actually really loving it. It's so fast paced. There's so much going on and I also do really like our main character. She's a very strong open-minded character. So far I'm really enjoying it and I'm actually super excited to keep reading so yeah I'm so glad that I picked this up. But I really have to go now so I will update you guys when I get back. Hi you guys. So it is a lot later. I have my pimple patches on so Let's ignore that. Did I literally miss the pimple? I did. How do you do that? There we go. Um, hi. <laughs> so, it is a lot later. It is 10.06, and I still have a good bit of the Grace Year left to read, but I only have an hour and 35 minutes left on our timer. 
we should be able to finish before midnight because that's been my goal too is to get all of these days done before midnight so that technically it's in that day you know but yes earlier i left off on page 202 i'm so excited because i'm actually really enjoying this book i definitely won't be able to finish it in that time span but if that's the case i'll probably just stay up and read it but yeah i'll update you guys later <laughs> Okay, so obviously our timer is up, but I am on page 317. I only have this much left, so I'm going to finish it, and um, I'll talk to you guys when I'm done. I just finished the grace year. Okay, so in this book, Tierney, she's on her grace year like we talked about. You know, it seems pretty cut and dry, learn how to survive together, but it's not just about that. It's about the way that the men treat them, why they're in this grace year, do they even have magic, and they're all trying to figure it out. Power is getting to people's heads. People are dying, people are delusional, and it is a roller coaster. It is so much fun. Some people might find it uncomfortable, the things that go on in this book and what they do. So it might not be for everyone, but I, I loved it. Oh my god, it was so good. Just read it, you guys. I gave this book five stars because I absolutely loved it, and I will recommend it to any and everyone. So definitely check it out. It is on Kindle Unlimited, so if you have that, check it out. But now... It's bedtime, and I'll see you guys in the morning for another day of reading. Hi, you guys. So today is Friday, and our screen time that we have to read for is 5 hours and 23 minutes, so not bad. And the book that we're reading, I actually have never heard of, but Shay commented on one of my videos the other day, and immediately I was intrigued. So I bought the book, and it came in yesterday, and we're going to read it. And that book is Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. I think it's just a YA fantasy. I am not quite sure, but I'm excited to get into it. So that's what we're reading for today, and we're going to get started. In this book, we are following a girl named Jocelyn. She grew up as the Prime Minister's daughter, so she's been around a lot of high-holding political power people. Because of the people she grew up around, she pretty much believes that all magic is bad in this world. I don't necessarily think that that's the case. I'm getting that vibe, you know? But because of her beliefs, when a thief named Jericho accidentally releases this magic and it goes inside of her, so now she has magic, she is freaking out and she wants to get this magic out of her. Jericho knows how, but now they have to team up together and go figure this whole issue out so that the power can not be in her because he also needs that power. That's what he was stealing. So now they're on like this little trip together and during during that process of them trying to figure this whole situation out, they end up inside of a prison actually, but the prison is set up on like a big plot of land, so everyone there, it's like its own little community, and everyone there has different roles that they do and stuff like that, so they have to share a cabin. While they're there, they say that they are dating, and that's how they got locked up together, and so far that's pretty much where I'm at. I don't want to say more because I don't want to ruin it, but it's really fun. It's going by fast. It's easy to read. I definitely do think this would be considered a YA fantasy and I can tell there's going to be romance in it which of course I'm going to love. I like the couple, I like their banter. At first Jocelyn I found her a little bit annoying but she's definitely gotten a lot better along the way and I just like that they're so sarcastic with one another. It's funny, it's good and yeah so far that's all I have to say. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I just finished Echoes and Empires. It's about Jocelyn and Jericho getting out of this prison, trying to figure out how to get this magic out of her, but it's also got a lot of political aspects to it in the sense that everything is just not what it seems. Like, all of these major political figures, like the queen, the prime minister, no one is what they seem at all, and magic is is not bad basically is what we're figuring out and you're kind of seeing Jocelyn slowly put the pieces together and learn over time that magic is not bad whatsoever and that the queen has been lying to everyone taking advantage of people and is not a really good person. I thought it was good. There is a second one and I do want to read it just probably not in this video but eventually I do want to get to it. I thought it was fun, fast paced, really easy to read, and yeah, I just enjoyed it. I thought it was a nice little book. The romance was also good, however, I will say in this book, it's very slow burn. There's not like a super heavy romance aspect to it, even though the whole time I was reading it, that's the only thing I cared about, but still, it was good. I give it a 3.5 stars. Now, here is the issue. As you can see, we only have 39 minutes left and I really don't want to start a new book with only 39 minutes left on the timer I also don't know if I'm going to have time to read later tonight because I do have plans So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is if I don't end up reading tonight I will probably add 39 minutes to tomorrow some may say that that's cheating. It's only 39 minutes I just really don't want to start a new book and only have 39 minutes to get into it. So if that bothers you, go touch some grass. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so today is Saturday. I thought we had no plans today, so I was going to wake up early, start reading for the day. But it was my grandmother's birthday. Did I forget her birthday? Yes. If she asked, no, I did not. I'm a terrible granddaughter. I know. I'm sorry. But she didn't even know how old she was, so, like, it's fine. But because of that, I didn't get to read today. It is now only, like, <laughs> it's 5 p.m., but... I just want to sit in bed and read while Parker plays his video game. So that's what I'm going to do. And I picked out our next book. So it's going to be Electric Idol by Katie Robert. I read Neon Gods by her like a week or two ago and I liked it. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was just a mindless, fun, little smutty book. I just want a fun, mindless, smutty little read while I'm in bed. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so our reading time for today is three hours and four minutes, but I didn't forget. Yesterday, we had 39 minutes left, so we're gonna do that and add it on, which would be 43. So three hours and 43 minutes totally doable and I'm gonna go the extra mile because it was actually 39 minutes and 25 seconds so we're gonna do the whole thing so yeah let's get comfy and start reading Okay, so I wanted to give you guys an update because I am like halfway through the book. I'm on page 184. And so this one is about Persephone from the first book. Her sister, what's her name again? Psyche? Is it Psyche or Psyche? It's about her and another guy named Eros. Eros's mother is Aphrodite and she hires a hit out on Psyche for a certain reason. And Eros is her hitman. So he's the one that's supposed to go and kill Psyche. Instead, he decides to marry her to save her life because he decides that he likes her and he doesn't want to kill her. Now, in this book, it's basically just them having a fake marriage, moving in together, you know, the small things that you do when you get married. Actually, very big things. And the entire time, they're trying to navigate how they're going to deal with his mother, basically. So, this book is just a big mommy issue book. But I like it. I like the romance. It's not a super deep romance because it is just like a spicy, dark romance book. But I'm going to keep reading. I only have an hour and 32 minutes left. Will it focus? I don't think I'm going to be able to finish within that time. But I'm probably going to sit here and finish this book. I 
have nothing else to do because I have no life. So let's do that. <laughs> Hold on, I'm mid-page. I got to page 304 and we officially finished our time for today. It is 917, but I only have this much left, so I'm going to quickly finish that and then I'll get back to you guys. So, I finished the book electric idol so of course in the end of this book you see them go from a marriage of convenience basically to actually falling in love with one another i really like it especially because eros is known as like kind of a playboy and in the end they do deal with the issue of his mother but one thing that happened in the first book that also kind of happened in this book is that his mom not wanting them to be together was like a big plot point and once again they took care of that so fast and easily in this book but I did really enjoy it. I thought it was fun. I didn't like it as much as the first one so I did give it 3.5 stars but overall it was just exactly what I needed in this moment you know and that's that. That's the last day we did it. We read our screen time for a week. Mm -hmm.